Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's training is going to be on this Fetco coffee machine that I have directly behind me. The complaint is, is that the user says, hey this thing, even though we're not brewing any coffee, it just continuously drips on us and it's causing a mess. So in doing some investigation, these uh, sil silicone diaphragms is the issue. I'm going to show you where these are located. This is the um, kit that we're going to be installing. It's the rebuild kit and uh, comes with uh, some components here including a brand new uh, silicone diaphragm. And we're going to show you that whole thing. I'm going to give you as good great video content as I can in the shortest time frame possible and I only ask for you to do one thing for me and that is to smash that like button down for me right now. And with that, let's go on with the show. Alright, here is the model number and serial number just in case you want to make a note of that for your um, for your particular situation. Alright, in order to capture the water that was constantly dripping from the heads, we just used this, uh, we just took the basket and just put this um, plastic container underneath it just to capture the water to make it easy. So the water is uh, uh, leaking from here for where the uh, basket gets connected to. This is what it looks like underneath and this is the called the Cascade Spray Dome which is used to help distribute the water uh, evenly across the uh, coffee as it goes through. And it's just held in with a, with a magnet. Okay, this unit has five solenoid valves. The first one, the, the one that is in the uh, top of the uh, photo right there, that one there is the fill valve where the water comes in. Then underneath that you will notice that there is the uh, brew valves and they have two uh, solenoid valves for that. And they, they, so those are the brew valves on the right. And so one of them is the brew valve and one of them is what they call the bypass valve. So the top one is the brew valve, then the other one's the uh, bypass valve. Then it's the same thing on the left hand side. Here is the uh, brew valve for the left and the bypass valve for the left. And I do want to mention, here's the part that we are replacing right here, the valve rebuild kit. You can see the part number right there and the components. And then this here is the actual package with the part number on it right there. And that is the uh, silicone diaphragm right there that I pulled out of the, the old unit. But you can see the replacement that we're purchasing uh, here. And you can see how this whole thing kind of goes together in this uh, schematic right here as well. Alright, so looking at the coffee machine, there's two access panels right here. I got the, the cover doors pulled off so that you can see inside. The fill valve is located behind here, <clears throat> and I'm going to show it to you right now. There's the fill valve right there that I am pointing to. So you can gain access to it from this access point, and you can also gain access to it from over here on this side. There it is right there, the uh, fill valve. Top there are two cover plates and there's some screws here to remove the uh, cover plates just held in there. So once you remove the screws then you can pull these off to gain access to all of your equipment that is underneath. The tank that the water is getting heated up from is behind this insulated blanket. So on top of the tank you've got some thermostats, heating elements, and everything on top of the tank. But our work is down here at the brew head. So here's the, the brew head on the left hand side and here's the one on the right hand side. This is the right hand brew valve and this is the right hand bypass valve. Now these are held in with screws and I got the screws right here. So it's basically four screws uh, located in these four corners. And then this, uh, and then I already pulled off the the um, electrical connections for the for the coil for the solenoid valve for the right hand brew head. And then once you pull that off, this is what it looks like. Let me show you that. And then down here, what you have is the seat. 
this where my finger is is the seat you want to make sure that there's no calcium buildup there and you don't want to be too aggressive if there is when you clean it because this you want this seat to be perfectly flat so to make the best seat possible because this is where your leak is actually taking place this is the part that's not closing properly that's causing the water to leak down uh, into your basket and continue to leak so you want to make sure you're good there right now the water is off to the machine and drained otherwise we would have a big problem here um, this is the bypass line that comes through that goes through the bypass solenoid valve right here but under normal conditions you're brewing your water through here so on your solenoid valve when you take it apart this comes apart like this you just pull the silicone diaphragm off gently and then that comes off like that now this is screwed on here with these four Phillips head screws let me take those off right now okay so once you remove those four screws which I uh, I got right here then this opens up and when this opens up it opens up like this and then you can remove this now generally speaking this is not really a problem the spring is is good but when you buy the rebuild kit it comes with a brand new one so why not go ahead and put the brand new one in we'll put the old one off to the side now I do want to mention that on the silicone diaphragm um, this is what they look like after this is after I've cleaned it but this particular one is even further compromised I'm not sure if you can see it but there is a there's like a slit in here and I'm going to try to continually move this to try to show you that but this this one was was bad so a, a regular cleaning did not just remove the calcium and magnesium and we want this thing to be leak free so of course we're going to put in the the brand new one so when we go to, when you go to put this together we're just going to use the the brand new um, component here put that underneath use our brand new silicone diaphragm put that on and it latches inside of here you know, kind of you can it kind of snaps in place there's a lip here you see that lip that's on there well that engages with the silicone diaphragm and makes sure that that is nice and sound then uh, back here we can go ahead and put this on now you this is it uh, idiot proof if you try to put it on this way it will will not work you can only go on this way so that the bolt holes uh, line up so I'm gonna go ahead and put those screws back on right now okay so here's the top of our machine this is already clean inside of here I already cleaned that out so that's good to go and this is uh, made up for our solenoid valve we're, we're good to go with our silicone diaphragm and, uh, and this when you put this on uh, I guess you know you, you cannot put it on you can either put it on this way or this way but considering that the wires for the coil are on this side over here so of course I want my terminals for my coil voltage to go that way so the only way that I want to put this on is like this and you want to kind of feet, you know seat it when you put it on so that it fits right in there nice and soundly so while that's holding I'm gonna put on these four screws into the mounting holes here and then button this up so I'll be back with you in just one second okay the four screws are on there soundly oh and I should mention that I have the switch off on the machine uh, before I, I when I took this all apart so the electricity is off nothing is on now as far as the coil goes there's the, the polarity on this doesn't matter so you could go this way uh, with the black wire on the left or you could go this way with the black wire on the right you, so as long as your wires are not pinched and everything is okay that is all that really matters you want to make sure that you're making a good connection into your terminals and that you're firmly seated you want to seat the wire and then give it a little tug to make sure that it's making a nice good contact and it doesn't just slip right out that's what you're looking for same thing on this side here going to seat that fully and make sure that that is sound. This particular brew valve is completely rebuilt. It's not necessary but uh, for me to open this up 
for the bypass valve. I only want to open it up for the demonstration of the video so that way you can see just kind of like what's going on over here on the uh, bypass valve. So I'm going to open this up just so that you can see it. Before I do anything, sometimes what I'll do, very common, I'll take a picture of this with my cell phone to make sure that my wires go back the same way. In this case, it's, almost, it's, a, it's practically idiot proof because this left hand connection is really one connection. And then the right hand uh, connection, the red wire, is just one wire. Let me pull that off. So again, pol polarity doesn't really matter. You could go this way or you could go this way. Okay, I have the four screws off. I'm just going to pull that off. And you can see that this uh, bypass valve looks differently. So it does, it doesn't, it, uh, the plunger mechanism for the solenoid valve uh, comes out and then this, I'm just going to pull that right out of its seat. And this is how this whole thing looks like. So this plate here can come off here on the top. I'm just going to set that to the side uh, for a moment. And then this here is how this all looks. Now on mine, it's I, I actually already cleaned it with the Brillo pad, but it's all nice and clean. You can see that the plunger looks similar to the regular brew valve uh, plunger, but it's not the same. It's a little bit different. It's a different valve, a uh, different uh, solenoid valve. So on this one here, just like the uh, brew valve, um, you just kind of make this fits in a little uh, slot right there so that that seats good right there then this seat here the seat for the uh, bypass I just want to as long as I, I'm at this structure I might as well just make sure that it's nice and clean so this here seat I already cleaned it but you would want to make sure that this seat here was clean in case this was leaking by as well then I'm going to go ahead and seat in the diaphragm for this into its um, into its recess here and make sure that that is firmly seated evenly all the way around then we're going to go ahead and put this plate on and this plate is what holds that diaphragm in place make sure that the bolt holes line up all the way around they do then we're going to go ahead and just take the solenoid coil and we're going to put that back on the same way we took it off with the two electrical leads facing uh, this way uh, towards me. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on top and then I'm just going to go ahead and re-secure my screws now that I've done an inspection and then I'll put my uh, electrical terminal leads back on. So okay I've got this all buttoned up all the four screws for the bypass solenoid valve are secured. When I landed my terminals, my electric terminals onto the coil I kind of supported the back of the coil with my with my hand here while I was pushing that on because I didn't want undue stress on the uh, plastic mechanism underneath that it mates to. So both the bypass valve, and, excuse me, the bypass valve and the brew valve are are are, are in good condition. Uh, this has been rebuilt already. I'm going to go ahead and do the left hand side and rebuild this one over here. I have to have it all apart. I'm going to put the uh, the uh, brand new. Uh, diaphragm over here on the left hand side and then button up the left and then we're going to do a test. Okay I do want to mention that when I'm rebuilding this <clears throat> and I put this back together again you want to put the four screws on for the for the coil to this plastic plate here then with this uh, silicone diaphragm in place you just want to depress it to make sure that it's not binding and that it's free to move. What happens is is when the coil has voltage asking for water to go in this this uh, plunger retracts this way and it allows the water to go in to the seat here to fill the uh, to fill the um, the carafe with uh, with with hot water with coffee when the electricity is off of the uh, coil voltage then the spring mechanism and the spring that I'm talking about is this spring right here this spring right here is the spring that will close the silicone diaphragm against the seat right here stopping the water. This is the seat that if it's leaking it's going to leak right here. That's why we're doing this job. Okay the left side is completely done. The uh, electrical terminals are landed on the coil. We're solid. 
The bypass, the left hand bypass valve is already good. I took it apart and inspected it just like I did the right hand valve that I showed you earlier in the video. So now that the this has all been pretty much rebuilt, we're going to put the machine on and test it. I had the water shut off so that I could work on the machine. I'm going to turn the water on now, which is with this valve right here. Turn that to the left. Okay, the water should be on to the machine right now. Going in back of the machine, there should be a on-off switch back here somewhere. Right here. Now the machine is on and the red light just illuminated. The LCD display just turned on. It's, I can hear the tank filling and I can see the display here. What is it saying? It's telling us the tank temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, and this tells you that it's filling right there. So we're going to let the machine fill up. And while it's doing that, one other thing that I could do is I'm going to just take and put a water dispenser here and see if I can get some water coming out of here. And I can. So just want to make sure that we've got good water there. But I'm just going to leave that be for now. And I'm just going to let the, the machine fill up. Okay, the machine has stopped filling. Uh, you can see that that it is no longer uh, got a button here. And then this box is checked indicating that it's currently heating. You can see the temperature is currently 76 and rising to 77. While I'm waiting for the ready light here to come on, I put the top panel on the tank heater with the four screws, one, two, three, four. This panel here, which covers the brew head uh, assembly, I don't want to put that on until after we're brewing and I can do a leak check with my eyes just to see if there's any water leaking anywhere around the parts that I touched because I did disturb all these seats around the solenoid valve. So we're going to do a leak check once we start brewing the water. I do want to let you know that there is a schematic diagram underneath the plate that goes here for the brew head solenoid valves. Okay, the machine says that we are ready. I'm going to touch the touch screen. Okay, so now that we've got this screen visible and if this is pointing this way indicating it's the carafe on the right hand side, the brew head on the right, I'm going to press it. You have to press it pretty good. There you go. So I depress that and it is totally filling. Actually, let me lower this down so you can see right at that level there. And you can see that it uh, filled for a second but then it stopped. Hang. This is what it looks like on the top. The valve is opened right now. It's brewing. And the valve just shut off. The brew valve just shut off. There are absolutely no leaks are evident anywhere. And this is on a countdown timer so it started off with just over five minutes and now it's got four and a half minutes. There you can see the water because I don't have any coffee in there. It's just dispensing the water. Let's see if I can open. Oh, I can't even remove this because it has a stop that came there making sure that it keeps this on. So I can't even peek in there. So we're just going to uh, monitor this. Uh, let it go through the uh, full cycle for the right hand uh, carafe and then we'll go and do the left hand carafe. And it's just, just dispensing and there are no visible leaks. Everything looks fine. Okay, so we are dispensing right now on the left hand side and I've been checking for leaks and there are no leaks visible. The solenoid valve it just cycles off and on to allow it to saturate that coffee. If there was a coffee filter in there with coffee, the valve would open, it would saturate the coffee, and then it stops, and then the valve shuts to allow it to uh, percolate through that coffee and filter before it goes into the carafe. In my case, there is no coffee and filter because I'm just doing a test. I'm just, you can hear the valve open, the valve just opened. And now that's the valve on the right brewing, and this one on the left shut off. So they're both moving simultaneously, you know, cycling uh, back and forth. But there's no leaks anywhere.
that we are visible. So we, since we are good with the leak department and everything is sound, and I need to give it a few minutes to, uh, actually I think the cycle on the right has finished. Oh yeah, it has, because I can now take out the, uh, the basket here and uh, see what's going on. So when this one filled up, it filled up with two bars everything is uh, good and hot. Let's see if there's any any leaks here. And there appears to be no leaks. Appear to be good. So that was a successful uh, job in the right hand side. So let me um, dump this uh, graph. I want to go ahead and put this uh, lid back on and then we'll let the one on the left finish off. Okay the, pr the brewing has stopped on the left hand side. Pull out the uh, the container. Everything is fine here. Pull that out of the way. And no leaks. Go ahead and pull that uh, pull that off. Give this a little wipe down. Just to make sure that everything's okay. And we are looking real, real good. Let me give you a shot underneath. Okay, there's the one on the left-hand side. And there's the one on the right-hand side. Okay, here's what the top of the machine looks like with the two covers put back on with all the screws. The machine is on and ready for brewing more coffee if we wanted to. There is absolutely no leaks on the left or right hand brew heads and everything is uh, sound and rebuilt. So totally good installation. Okay, that is going to conclude this video. If you got any useful information out of this video at all, I would greatly appreciate if you would smash that like button down for me right now. Subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I will catch you on the flip side.